you could just look at the camera and uh, go from William Wilbur. Wilbur? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. cool. Like that's I've heard a lot of William. William's cool. Yeah, me. that's. I mean, everyone always assumes William. It's ever since I was a kid, but no, it's Wilbur. Yeah, there's not many of us around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that actually. I thought it was like cartoon. Right. All right, so let's let's. Uh, Okay. okay, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is Coffee with Jesus, and we talk about God. So if you don't like that, well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to hear or you're interested and you want to know more about what we believe, then that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm here with Wilbur Becker. Becker. Yep, that's right. Awesome. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's, let's talk about your faith. Let's talk about, um, how you came to faith or why. Okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of a long story. There's a, um, church in town called First Baptist Church, which, uh, my grandparents are actually founders of, co-founders of that church. Uh, so my family has, um, a lot of history in this town as far as that church is concerned. Uh, my dad went uh, for a long time. He did fall away. I didn't grow up in the church, um, so I was kind of raised outside of the church. Dad, uh, my parents had split, and dad was a minor, and uh, I don't know. Stuff happened, and so we stopped going to church. But uh, we live uh, right next door to the parsonage uh, for where the pastor lives for that church. And when I was in um, junior high, uh, late junior high, uh, that church had gotten a new pastor, and uh, so there was a new family that moved in. And uh, at the time, I didn't quite understand it, but um, God was really uh, convicting me to uh, introduce myself to the neighbors, which was very odd for me. I'm very introverted. I'm not the kind to just step out or uh, do uh, you know, anything like that. So, or like um, this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but... Uh, Anyway, so I introduced myself to the neighbors. They had a, a son. He was a couple grades younger than I was. Um, but uh, I talked to him and uh, started making friends with him. And then he introduced me to a guy that was in the same grade as me who became my best friend. And uh, the three of us hang out, hung out a lot. And eventually I started going to church with them. Um, at first it was just so I could hang out with them more. Uh, but eventually, the more I listened, the more uh, I paid attention to uh, what was being said in the sermons. God just worked on my heart. And, uh, you know, eventually I just felt that conviction and uh, wanted to be saved and understood, you know, that I was a sinner, that everyone's a sinner, and there's nothing I could do to fix that. Um, only God could, you know, save me. And uh, if. You know, there's consequences if you don't get saved, if you go to hell, and I uh, definitely didn't want that to happen, but uh, understand what understood what Jesus did by uh, dying on the cross to save me, and, you know, went up, talked to the pastor, and got saved, and later got baptized, and that's the long and short of it. I wasn't, you know, I was a good kid. I didn't do a lot of bad stuff, so there wasn't a lot of you know, like a big turnaround for me, but um, there was still a lot of things that I could have gotten into that I didn't after I got saved. So. What would you describe being saved? How would you define that? Like, what do you mean? How would I define that? So, so everybody's born. I guess you go through the whole story. So everybody's born into sin. Uh, I believe in the Bible. I believe uh, in what it teaches and that there was a, a literal Adam and Eve. And uh, there was a literal Garden of Eden. And uh, in that time, they uh, sinned. They turned against God. And that caused, you know, this rift between God and humanity. And, uh, of course, from Adam and Eve came all of humanity, and they inherited that uh, sin nature. So um, eventually God had a plan, and uh, a few thousand years later, Jesus 
came to be a man. He was uh, fully man, yet fully God. And he uh, was lived a sinless life, became a perfect sacrifice, died on the cross. And for every sin, there's a consequence. There's some kind of payment. And, you know, in the Old Testament, there were sacrifices and things that had to be made. Um, but when Jesus made the final sacrifice, uh, that covered everything. So now there's no longer uh, anything we need to do. There's no longer any rituals to keep or, you know, sacrifice of animals. Um, he did it all. And it was only him. There's nothing I can do. And when, I, and when you accept that, that's, that's essentially becoming saved. So what about like what people describe as religious activities in, like, in your religion? What does that mean or are they confused? Or Well, the way I see it, and this is, you know, I, I read the Bible and I've read through it uh, several different times. And, um, you know, Paul in the New Testament talks a lot about works and um, the exact verses aren't coming to my head, but he talks a lot about how... Um, you know, everything you do, you do for God as a result of being saved. You don't do it in order to be saved, right? So as Christians, you know, we help the poor. We, uh, we um, you know, care for the widows, you know, all those things, you know, the Old Testament stuff. But we are, you know, good servants in the community. We think of others first. Uh, you know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And... But that's all as a result of being saved. That's not what saves you. Um, it's just once you become saved, the Holy Spirit enters you, and you want to put off that sin nature. You want to stop doing those bad things, and in turn, you want to start doing the good things. The good things don't save you, but it is a result. It is uh, the fruit, essentially, of what a saved person shows when they become saved how do you tell the difference because there's a lot of people doing good things thinking that they're a good person and then there's a lot of so there's a lot of people doing good things thinking that it makes them a good person mm -hmm. right how do you tell the difference between someone who's trying to earn that and someone who's doing that from the from the depths of their heart without trying to seek some sort of reward right um well, a lot of it comes from motives, you know. Because like I talked about, there are people that are trying to earn their way to salvation. They're doing this, and by doing this, they will uh, earn their way to heaven. And then so it comes from a selfish perspective, right? It's, it's them promoting themselves in such a way that they can earn their way to heaven. Whereas um, to do it the other way, then you're actually, there's a genuine care about other people. There's a genuine uh, desire to help, another, to help others. So it's, it starts with um, just kind of where they're coming from, where their basic motives are, right. if you can determine that. Yeah. I think that's very interesting what you say, when you say that, because for me, it, it, it feels like, you know, we go back and forth between doing things for God and then doing things for selfish motives mm -hmm. for attention seeking and stuff like that. I right. guess that would be it. Right. Like look yeah. at what I did. Right. Exactly. Versus yeah. like, like someone thanking you for no reason. It almost feels like when it's genuine, like, thank you for that. And you're like, I didn't even try to. Right. That's, you know, you know, it's just what I do. It's what I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what Jesus is for me is Jesus is this. Thank you for doing that. And it's just like, I didn't, try to do anything to get attention or anything, right. you mm -hmm. know, but then it's just the right thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then people in the wor worldly people or people who aren't in Christ, they're just like, look at what I did. Look what makes me a good person. Right. Those are two different types of people. Yeah. Jesus actually told a parable in that way. Uh, past our pastor has been preaching on that, uh, this past Sunday where, um, it's in, it's in Luke chapter, uh, six or seven and the parable is there's um, a Pharisee so you know a high religious person back in the day and uh, he's praying to God and he says oh you know look at the things I do I fast and and I give and you know I do all of this and you know there's a lot of I statements 
And, you know, and I'm so much better than this man who is a sinner who's done this and who's done that. And, you know, he does this comparison thing. And then you go over to the other guy who's a tax collector who, in, in the eyes of a lot of Jewish people back in the day, was uh, almost a traitor. Because he was, you know, uh, in some ways extorting his own people. Uh, but they go, so you switch over to his perspective, and his whole attitude is just, I'm a sinner, forgive me. He's, there's no pretense, there's no comparison. He knows he's bad, he knows you know, so, he's full of sin, and, it, and there's no excuse for it. You make, a, you make a good point when you say that comparison. So comparison mm -hmm. is being self-righteous, right? Being right. religious, right? Yeah. Like, like comparing each other to each other, mm -hmm. which Paul says is, is not wise. Exactly. Those who compare themselves. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that, I think that would be, that's great. Like I, psh, Holy Spirit just, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, that's mm -hmm. another identifier that someone is being religious. Someone is being, trying to say that I'm better than this person because whatever, mm -hmm. you know, or I should be rewarded because I do this and, you know, something mm. like that, right? Yeah, yeah, it goes back to those I statements, right? Yeah. It's I focused. It's uh, center focused. Yeah. And, you know, true true Christianity, true belief and living out that belief is, you know, others focused. Is you're focused on the people around you, you're not yeah. focused on yourself. That's so easy. That's so easy to do is uh, yeah. cuz that's where I was like, man, like when I would think about ideas that I would have I would think to myself, like, me, me, me kind of thoughts, how I'm going to get it done, how I'm going to do this, me, me. And then when I think about stuff like this, I, I was thinking about, I want people to be heard. I want people, whether Christian or not, I want people to be heard. And whether they have voices or maybe they have a good opinion or maybe people in the community judge them wrongly or whatever i want people to be seen and when i think that way it it, it brings some sort of encouragement and peace and it and it, and it it makes me even think it's possible and then here we are mm -hmm. but when i'm focusing on my selfish projects it's like maybe that's not what god wants me to do <laughs> right oh yeah oh i get that um you know i do a little bit of video work myself and i've done i've done various things i've done uh you know back when i first started really doing it i was doing uh our pastor at the time, his son and grands and two grandsons were skateboarders, and uh, I had a had an old camera with a tape in it, and we'd go out to the skate park and I'd record them and then started uploading them on YouTube, and uh, you know that was fun, um, but I don't think it was really reaching or speaking to anybody. Um, there's a movement on YouTube called uh, Let's Plays where people play video games and they have commentary and talk about it, and I tried doing a little bit of that, and that. Kind of didn't get anywhere, but now one of my the project that I'm doing on YouTube now um, is actually lyric videos for Christian music. Yeah, I've seen that. You got a lot of hits on that one. Yeah, and uh, that one, you know, it's amazing. I started that. Um, a situation happened in our church. We had we had some people leave. Our basically almost our entire worship team, uh, which I was a part of. I played guitar as uh, supporting that. Um, but when everybody left, it was kind of all up to me. And I, I'm not the best, you know, I'm, I'm, I, whatever, but, um, we, I, I felt like there was a lot missing now. Uh, so I started ma looking for the, uh, lyric videos that were already on YouTube and I was kind of disappointed with what I found. Things were hard to read. The timing was in such a way that it was hard to sing along with, um, stuff like that. So I got a little frustrated. So I just started making my own videos and then I started doing that and then, um, I decided, you know, if there might be other people out there like me who are trying to find videos like this and they are having a hard time finding what they what they want. Maybe they're having the same issues I was. Oh, you're talking about like when people would look up videos or worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, and they'd have the words up there and the, and the music singing along, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, because some of them, the words would pop up right as they were singing it and that doesn't give you time to know right. what's coming. Right, you know? right. <laughs> So it's yeah. really hard to yeah, sing along yep, with yep. as a congregation. And, uh, <laughs> or, you know, it's a really weird text. Or yeah, there's yeah. so much going on in the background, you can't focus on the words, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it drove me crazy, you know. And uh, so so anyway, I uh, so I got frustrated with that. So I'm like, I'm going to make my own videos. And I found a couple websites where I got some nice backgrounds and I did the lyrics. And, I, you know, I already had all the setup because of the previous projects I had. So I had the... the uh, 
the software and everything and uh, started making my own and I decided, you know, like I said, I thought maybe there's other people that are having the same frustrations I was so I could upload these <laughs> and other people could use them, you know, in their churches or whatever yeah. and, you know, and if anybody wanted me, you know, a special song request, I could do that or I could, you know, save all my files to a thumb drive and send them to a church if they needed, which actually a church reached out to me and I was able to send them all of my videos so they could use for their services. Wow. And that was, you know, just amazing, you know, that I was able to do that. Um, and then for like two years, uh, things got busy and I stopped making the videos. We actually started getting a worship team again, so we didn't need the videos. So I had to focus back on guitar playing. And for like two years, the 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 channel kind of got stagnant, like a year and a half, two years. And yet through that time, I mean, God was using that channel. Because mm -hmm. I, by the time I stopped, I maybe had two, maybe 3,000 subscribers. And within that year and a half, two years, I went to over 5,000. That's a lot. You were so in seed. And sometimes right. the seed mm -hmm. doesn't grow up exactly. right away. Yeah. Yep, and then so I wasn't doing anything. God was doing everything, right? And then it got to the point where things calmed down. I had some extra time. I wanted to get back to it again. And right now, I've just recently passed over 8,000 subscribers. So I'm, I'm jealous. I'm on my, <laughs> way, I'm my, on my subscribers way to are going down. <laughs> I'm like, you're telling me about 8,000. I'm like... I barely yeah. got a hundred. Right. So I mean, <laughs> but you know, it's all God, and it comes from it comes from, you know, where the motive was. When I was doing the skate videos, that was just for fun. I, you know, we weren't really trying to reach. We weren't. There was skate, we had some some Christian stuff in there. Skate, skateboarding. They're yeah. out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, a skate park down at the end of the road by oh. the by the school. Actually, before that school was built, though, they had the skate park down there. Yeah, and um, and then we actually traveled. We went to Elko and Winnemucca, um, and we did some shooting over there. And then we had some Christian stuff interlaced. It was Christian music in the background. We did some verses. Um, you know, I did an interview towards the end, but I don't know. Stuff happened, and, and you know, they moved, and so that project kind of went on the wayside. And then I was doing the video games, and I wanted to do something positive and clean, but I wasn't, like, focused on, you know, God and the Spirit as I was doing the, the Let's Play the video game uh, videos. But then when I got to this one, to, to this project, um, and then it was totally from, uh, I want to be able to help others through this, and I don't care how many subscribers I get, you know, I'm not, I've, I can't make money off of it because it's copyrighted music. You know, the Let's Plays, I was, I, I could make money off of it, but, um, you know, but this, I can't, I, I mean, there's no, there's nothing in it for me with these Let's Plays. I can't make money off of it, I can't. You know, unless a church wants to, you know, contact me and, and and pay me for those videos. But honestly, I don't ask like a certain amount or anything. Mm -hmm. Just, hey, you know, whatever you want to give. That's what you this know, is so. for too. Like, mm -hmm. like, I feel like as an artist that you have to have something that you do that is pure. The right. motives are pure mm -hmm. and there's no business. There's no, there's nothing. I, I use it. I, I, I use it for just like ministry work. Like this is mm -hmm. just... This is just back to the giving back to the world. This is just for me. This is just exactly. for, or just for like my, you know, um, uh, how do you describe it? Um, just my creative outlet. This is just, right. this is for whoever wants to watch it. I'm not expecting money. I'm not trying to promote whatever. Right. Like if it, if it, if people know who I am in this because of this, and they see the other work that I do charge for, then by all means, you know. Mm -hmm. But this exactly. is just like straight for, this is just pure motives, you know, I believe. I, you know, I, and it keeps me going mm -hmm. to do those other things, to do those, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, for things, sure. You know? Yeah, so, it's, that's, it's so energizing. And I feel like that's what we need as art artists. We need mm -hmm. whatever your art platform is, is we need something that just keeps you going, you know, keeps you like something pure that yeah. you don't charge for, something that you just give back, something that mm -hmm. you could just let your creative energies flow, you know, right. and uh, keeps you, gives you hope and gives others hope and then be inspired and in inspiring others. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know? Absolutely. Because what, what is tomorrow, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what this is for. Right. So I hear you when you're saying like what you're talking about, your creative outlets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's fun. Um, 
like it's just I have a lot of hobbies. That just happens to be one of them. And yeah, I just love that. I love that God's using it, and you know He's using it for His glory, not mine. Right. You know. And I and I wanted to work on with with you with something. I know we got something planned up. We've been right. talking. We've yeah, been talk yeah. He's a filmmaker. Talking. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got all my own equipment. I, one point, I, I tried. I was, uh, I was in a transitional period, and I, and I had a choice between like a really secure job and maybe trying to do my videography thing around here. And I ended up trying to do the videography thing. I bought a bunch of equipment, and then you know, just the the work just kind of fell out, and I ended up finding a different job. But um, you know, I still I still love to do it though. It, I, it's still, it's hard. Fun. It's hard to to in a sense do what you love for a living oh yeah and to and to find a niche mm -hmm. and and i think the niche is is yes you can do a lot of good jobs for other people mm -hmm. but the, i for me the niche would probably be something like that you're passionate about yeah that just keeps that you can't stop thinking about you know mm -hmm. absolutely and trying to yeah. figure out what that is because mm -hmm. i start a lot of projects like you i start like oh i start this and then i like ah no maybe that's not it but I liked it. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know. yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, what is your your experience? You born and raised in Battle Mountain. Yep. So, um, my my dad moved here when uh, he was in uh, high school, I believe. So, yeah, I've lived here my whole life. I uh, I went to school here, grew up here. You know, I, I knew these streets. I knew. I remember when they put in McDonald's first fast food restaurant. I remember, you know, the Super Eight Motel when that was just an empty lot, and uh, you know, just seeing this whole community uh, grow and decline, and all the projects that you know tried to happen and uh, tried to happen. Try, yeah, there was a, there was a, there, was a, there was one big project when I came back. So I left for the military for four years. That was my time away, and then I came back after that, and I went to college here and. Uh, and eventually, of course, uh, met my met a girl online who eventually became my wife. She moved over here to be with me, and uh, happily married now for five years. We just had our five five year anniversary. I thought so. you guys were married longer. No, no, five years. That was it. Um, like this year, five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so we're right behind. Same. So when we when I got married, I've been married for a little over two years now, mm. <laughs> and uh, nice. I think. <laughs> You were three. So when we got married, you were three years in. Must be yeah. You were two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Time flies. Tell me about it. <laughs> I can't even believe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. When I came back from uh, the military, there was this big project that was supposed to be kind of off the side, kind of near Hilltop. Um, this company out of Henderson, which is close to Las Vegas. Uh, green Energy. They they did. Um, Geothermal, they did uh, uh, wind energy, solar energy, um, all that stuff. They were going to build a, like a giant research and development um, and manufacturing facility out here. And they said, you know, this is a great spot because we have the railroad, we have an airport over here, and then we have uh, the highway. You can get to like two thirds of the country within like two days. Stuff like that. So they said this would have been a great hub, and then that project kind of got shot down by uh, different people around here. So that I, was one that didn't I hear go a lot of things get shot down here. It's unfortunate. There's a lot of people that like this community to stay small. They want it to stay small. They want it to stay, you know, how they know it. Um, but you there's there's so much out opportunity. You think they're afraid? I think part of it's afraid. Um, and then, you know, it's just traditionalists. They don't want to see change. They don't like change. They just want things to stay the way that it is. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been hearing a lot about that mm -hmm. and I have my own perspective. Um, my perspective was when we moved here, you're from here. Mm -hmm. We moved here, you know, it's really hard to fit in here <laughs> for my I perspective. Right, I can see that. I can <laughs> for see me, that. like a, a kind of city esque guy. I travel a lot. I do a lot of. I've traveled a lot. Yeah, you know. And um, I was in the military as well. And right. so I like trying out new things. I like learning about things, and I love to like meet new people. And what are you into? You know. Right. And when I got here, and I'm not saying everyone is that way here. Right. But no. I'm saying yeah. like there's a strong. Goal 
here that just that just doesn't want to let up and i just like i'm like i almost gave up that's why you, you hear me go like quiet for a while right i've been making videos i'm like i'm done with this community god i'm finished with this community it's freaking blah, 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 you know right and then the holy spirit god was just like keep going keep pushing keep pushing them keep going and i'm just like all right i keep forgiving and keep going and it's just and so i got that hopefully hopefully we can pull out all the roots right yeah <laughs> no it's and it's rough because there's i mean there's the old timers the the families that have been here forever some of the ranchers you know and and the higher ups commissioners i i know we had some fights with the commissioners on different projects really yeah the uh you don't have to go into detail. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> you don't have to yeah, point no, your fingers it, out. A, yeah. No, there's this guy right structure. here, yeah. <laughs> Bill. And, and some of them. We'll some post of them. this picture up. <laughs> 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 this guy right here. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, they're not even in that position anymore. But, um, right. but no, that's, yeah, just different projects. Because I used to work, I worked for a time with the uh, Civic Center. And uh, so, you know, I got to see the different projects and different things that were going on. Um, I was involved with a committee that I was didn't know you worked there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked there. It was probably not even a full year, I want to say. But uh, yeah, I worked there for a time. It was part time as the uh, uh, office admin. That's cool. Yeah. How long did you do that? It was, like, it was less than a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not quite a full year. Um, it just. That was, in my opinion, at the time, they had, there was a full-time director and then a part-time office admin. And my position from that, um, with everything that was going on, was you needed two full-time people. And the board said, we can't do that. And I said, well, then I can't stay here. You know, because there was too much going on and, and there was so much stress with certain aspects of that position. There was stuff I loved about it, too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, there was a lot of stress from certain things and uh, I just said it's you just can't do it with two with with a full-time and a part-time you need two full-time and mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't it wasn't worth what it would cost yeah they said yeah like not cost like co like you know money wise but just it wasn't you know what I mean yeah the pay wasn't worth the stress yeah 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 yep so I, I left and I was because at that time I was working part-time there and part-time at the college and then uh, I went back to the college I got full-time there for a little bit and then they uh, had to make some cuts and my position was eliminated so I got laid off. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Give, give me a second, I'm going to check what's up. Okay. No I have good news and I have bad news. Okay. The good news is I've been recording here, I did not record here, which is terrible. However, I can still it's just meaningless. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I was like, did I press record? <laughs> well, I guess whoever's listening yeah, this will be the first time we're gonna just go for a, a radio kind of radio <laughs> style. <laughs> that works. But um, with that not being said, um, we're gonna do this interview again. If okay. that's okay with you, yeah, it could be next it. week or whenever you're. Yeah, free. yeah, some of the time. Um, but dang, I guess this is gonna be that much more sweeter than. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, this is the first time for everything. So. Oh yeah, yeah all this stuff happens, and I just. Gotta learn from mistakes. Yeah, that's all. I gotta repent. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Is that is that the pastor's son? Yes, it is. School? What did he do? Why is he walking? They 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 had a funeral today. Funeral? Who? who uh, Larry Burkhart. Burkhart. Why does that name sound familiar? Burkhart's. They're they're a pretty big family in town. Um, they own. I'm not sure what all they own, but um, yeah, because there's Larry and then Larry's son, 
Oh, is that the it's the, part of the, 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 the VFW? You're talking that. about the someone from Lisa Burkhart or something? Yeah, part of that family, I think. Yeah. yeah? She's, I don't know if she's listening. <laughs> I'm going to post this. I don't care. This is yeah. still pretty good. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that would be my – so you have an interesting perspective of, of this town. You've grown up here. I've heard a different perspective and whatnot. And you got a pink backpack? What? You got a pink backpack? Yeah. It's my swim team's colors. Oh. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't even know you swam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he swims, he wrestles, he... Throw. What's that? I throw shotgun distance. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, field, track and field. Throw, he does that, and I feel like he did something else. I did basketball for it. Yeah, he did basketball, yeah. I'm going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, record, and I'm just going to use an image to... All right, see you. Yeah, see you, Ben. I'm going to use it. I did press record, but this one doesn't work for some reason. Oh, gotcha. So I'm just going to use the image. That works. So that way they can just kind of look at a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess, so I got something to look at. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they know at least your face. Right. You know. Might as well just leave it. Might as well catch the end of it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna shoot for forty minutes. If that's all right. Okay. Whatever works out for that one. Yeah. Ooh man, sorry man. I just it happens. It happens. Show me, <laughs> show me, for, forgive me. Right. Show me some grace, <laughs> some undeserved grace. <laughs> right. Uh, well, that's well. You talk about grace. That's kind of. I mean, isn't that the definition of grace? Something yeah. that's undeserved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I hope it's – I love this conversation. Mm. And I was just – yeah, I need to get my crap together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this this community was very hard to – I've met a lot of awesome people, but then mm. I've just – there's there's a good handful of them that just make me <laughs> mad. <laughs> yeah. No, I – yeah, I get that. I mean uh, – you had to have heard the story about uh, the armpit of America. Yeah. 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 Washington Post uh, reporter came to town and had a horrible experience and just met all the wrong people. And uh, yeah, then we got the title Armpit of America. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> And, and and anytime anyone we've had new pastors come in, we've had you know new people come in, and they 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 Google Battle Mountain, and that's the first thing that comes up. <laughs> Dude, I Googled Battle Mountain before I came out here. I I YouTubed it, and I was like, let's see what they got for film. It was just like someone had a phone in a restaurant. It was not lit, and it was just like yeah. I was like, Nikki, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, like stop. And then we came out here. We drove out here to visit. She got a job out here, and then mm. I was just like, no, no. <laughs> and then we were coming out here, driving out here for 11 hours from Montana, mm. and I'm just worshiping, like, crying kind of in the back of my <laughs> mind, like, like, oh, like, Jesus, like, I pray that there's something out here for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have done a lot of jobs that I would never normally do. <laughs> I, I get that, yeah, yeah. But that, that can change. Yeah. <laughs> It can, yeah, yeah, no. I was, I told you, I got laid off from the college. I actually worked at the Maverick here. Yeah, uh, you told me for about that. for a few months, and uh, yeah, I would not work there again. That was that was an experience. Let me tell you, that was it. Yeah, but now I've got you know that was you know just a bided my time there, did what I need to do to support my family at the time. But then eventually, uh, an opportunity came by, and now I work for uh, a mining contractor and. You know, I'm doing something that it's not a dream job, but you know what? It's a whole lot better than, than the other job, and it pays decent money, and I get to get a lot of experiences now with uh, the position I'm in. So you don't hate it's it, pretty nice. you don't yeah. love it too much, but it's 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 keeping you mm -hmm. going, and and maybe that people find their niche. You know, like like um, I'm going to be honest and say mining is not for me. I've done something mm -hmm. similar to that. I've worked at 12 hours, nights and days, back and forth, and um, it just, I realized 
it just this isn't for me and and i would just go home and be miserable yeah. and i was like no i'm not doing that i'm not because if i'm miserable my family's going to be miserable yeah. you know and i'm not going to put that on them so i was like you know and I worked at a few jobs here, and I enjoyed it. But you know, I worked at Maverick as well, and then mm. I I loved meeting the random people that would come through here and, and stuff. Oh, there were definitely some fun experiences. Yeah, um, yeah, there, yeah. Some people asking different questions about the town, where to go, and let me t- and I think some of the funnest time working at Maverick was actually when the uh, the Human Powered Speed Challenge was in town because you have all the yeah. the people from different countries coming in and different accents and you know everything's new to them and fresh and that was that was, I, was fun too i i realized something in battle mountain recently is i i realized unless you're from here you know like what to do here you know like right. unless you're into like hunting and farming and 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 you're into you know mining or mm-hmm. you're into like um those kind of things and you know where those places are and you know the people and stuff like that, then you're all good here. But if you're from an outsider trying to come in and make your way, no one's showing you these places. No one is introducing you right. to these people. No one is doing these things. And it just and – and everyone – it seems like it's very clicky here. And I know I that could be that. any place, but mm-hmm. it's just like – you got to, for me, in my perspective, you got to get in within and it's just, and I, I, you know, I've heard like a lot of people don't last, so they don't invest in the new people who come here and stuff. Yeah. So, but it's, it's all speculation and just this, I can only tell my own experience. Yeah, no, it's, here. it's, it's hard. Definitely. Cause you know, I mean, there's, yeah, there's hunting and fishing, there's mountain biking, you know, all the outdoorsy stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And I like some of that stuff, but a lot of time I don't have the time for it. I don't have the money for the toys required yeah, right, for it. Right, right. You know, so it's like, you know, I I work with people and they're like, oh, yeah, we're going fishing on the weekend and they got this fancy bass boat or they're going camping and they got this really nice, you know, camp trailer or whatever. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, we're just going to. I'm poor. Work around the house. <laughs> I, you know, what are you doing this weekend? Anything fun? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Putting stuff aside for a yard sale. I don't, I don't know. You know, it's in. I I would like I would like whoever those people are to to you know help us out. You know, help us out. Like we can't afford those like ATVs and stuff like that, yeah. boats and all that stuff that you got. And you know what I mean. And so I'm a filmmaker. I lo- I love the cities and I love like mm-hmm. you know you know doing city esque things. And that's what I want to see a little bit more of mm-hmm. you know i want to see a little bit more pride in the community yeah you know oh yeah absolutely i one of the thing honestly one of the things that frustrates me about this town sometimes and part of this comes from the time that i did spent working at the uh the civic center was there's people you worked at the civic center when, you I, si- when I worked yeah i thought you go ahead but the civic... anyway <laughs> um because, you know, I'm one of those people, too. I, like I said, I enjoy some of that stuff. I don't do a lot of it because I don't have the toys and I don't have the time and yada, yada, yada. And there are people in this town who don't, who are in a similar situation. If they're not into that stuff, they say, oh, there's nothing to do around here. There is so much you can do around here. Mm-hmm. And there's so much. I, I have so many ideas I would love to do for this town. Businesses I'd like to start. Projects I'd like to get going. But, you know, it's a matter of time and knowing the right people and stuff like that. But um, there's, I mean, so much opportunity in this town. There's so many events going on. You've got the Bass Festivals. You've got the Human Powered Speed Challenge. You've got the, and even if you're not into hunting, I'm not into hunting, but I love the Chucker Tournament. I love volunteering and hanging out with those guys and doing stuff like that. We actually, uh, I worked with um, Amy Rogers, who at the time was part of the, uh, Battle Mountain Arts, I don't know, some committee, but uh, <laughs> I, forget, I forget what it was. But uh, anyway, um, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, we put uh, we put on, I love theater. I love performing in theater. I love I did not know that. being on stage and performing. And it's not about, it's not about fame or whatever. I just, I love performing. And we actually did a uh, community theater. We tried to start up a community theater group. And we put on a play. 
and it just um yeah people some people got involved a few people got involved a lot of them didn't take it very seriously um you know there wasn't a great turnout and we ended up that was our first and our last um foray with the community theater troupe but i i would love to start one again and try it again but um i've done yeah, a little bit you know. of theater yeah a little bit for when i was going to film school mm -hmm. and whatnot but yeah i just i think i think there needs to be more job selections out here than just in 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 and well paying too. Yeah. Because if there was more of that, then there would be because people people are gonna move where the jobs are at. Oh yeah. Exactly. You know, and if there are good paying jobs, mm -hmm. people will move there and they'll bring a, a whole different culture and diversity and people need to make be able to make a living before they can live. You yeah. Know? Well, and it's interesting you, you bring that up. I work with a lot of guys who They work here, but they not only don't live in this town, they don't live in this state. Oh, wow. they, they come from Idaho and Utah on their work days, and then they go back home to that state. And they stay at a hotel, or they stay in a camp trailer, or whatever. And I've heard, you know, people talk about, you know, even with, with the good-paying miners' jobs, they won't move to Battle Mountain. My boss lives in Winnemucca, but he works here in Battle Mountain. Mm. And it's because they feel like there's nothing going on around here. You know, there's nothing for the families. There's nothing for yeah. this, mm -hmm. that, or the other. And, the, you know, that's one of the things that I would love to start is something for families. And whether that's a bowling alley or... Right. That's what you know, we were saying, too. Stuff, like, so. like we were, me and my wife were talking, like, even if they just opened up this big old warehouse, mm -hmm. you know, and made it for, like, like, uh, like an indoor park... And I know they're talking yeah. about the rec center, but come on. Well, <laughs> like I'm just saying, like I have stuff about the rec center, but anyway, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I know. Well, no, like right. one of my ideas was, you know, bowling alley is super expensive, but like a, um, a, a ninja gym, right? Obstacle course. Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that would be a blast. I hate working out, honestly. I know I need to. I hate it because it's repetitive. It's boring. It's just not fun. But you get like an obstacle course. Oh man, I'm all over that. <laughs> I don't care how tired I get. I'll just flip around, do all this stuff, climb over this, do all this other stuff. I would love that. Mm. I would be all over that. You know, but that's <laughs> you know, and I, and you know, starting up. That's that's one of my ideas for this town, and I think that would be you know a good start to expanding upon other things. I agree, yeah. and I and it just. I'm sure I know, and I don't know, but I know mm. that some businesses have come in here and that they're trying to do something here. And for some reason, I don't know why they have not. But I know that there has been businesses. They get turned away. I'm telling you. I don't know for what reason. I don't know. I know they've been coming here and they've been like, look at all this land. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Look at all this land. Yeah. Well, um, and I told you about the... Uh, the one company, you know, with the uh, the green technology, R and D, and manufacturing and distributing stuff like that, I honestly believe between the commissioners and NV Energy, they just got stonewalled. Because imagine, because one of the things they were going to do was they were going to set up this big area of solar panels to run their facility, and any extra energy left over after that would be pushed out into the community for free. And I have a strong suspicion NV Energy did not like that. So, yeah. And then the commissioners, because it was going to be bringing, you know, bringing in all kinds of jobs, boosting the economy. You know, there would be hundreds, you know, if not thousands of jobs that would be created from this project. And they, and they didn't want it because they didn't want that kind of expansion in this community. I've, I've heard uh, that the, there's political systems everywhere you go. Oh, yeah. You know, in church, I mean, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it should be there, but it, it is. And I'm not saying every church. I'm just saying. Right, right. So um, everywhere you go, even in, even in the household. So there's, 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 I honestly think it's fear. I think fear drives Fear's people a big from doing something different, doing mm -hmm. something new, you know. Um, yeah. That's what I think. Absolutely. It's their way of me and my wife watched this movie, Footloose, the remake. 
Oh yeah. Uh, I think it came out like a few years ago. Oh, a couple years ago, yeah. And it was it was I've I've never seen the first one, but I've also I've always heard the the song Footloose. Right. <laughs> do, do, yeah, I've never seen I haven't seen either one, but I get the concept of it. Yeah, yeah and it's just basically long story short, there's this car accident with these kids. They die because um, they're partying, and the the local people who run the count, council and all that stuff decided we don't want any of our kids dying, so they put up all these rules. And there's nothing wrong with rules. I think rules are great, but yeah. you can't control people at the end of the day. Right. They, they choose to do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. You can put a rule up. You can put up all these rules. Mm-hmm. Old Testament, right? Right, right. Biblically, oh, yeah. they put up all these rules, but we kept breaking them. And I think that's the thing about God's love is he gives us free will. And that's the thing about our country is it should be based off of free will. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of things in this world, but that's what makes us free. Right? Is the fact that people can do those things. Yeah. And, th- you know, that's one of those things where it's like, well, you you know, you're stuck in your ways or you're, you're judging. And it's like, no, I'm telling you what I believe is right or wrong. You still have a choice to do it or not. Right. I just have... I have the responsibility to let you know I think it's not I think it's wrong and this is why. Yeah. yeah. What you do with it after that is on you. <laughs> but it is but I have a res- I have uh, a responsibility to say hey, right. I don't think that's right. Yeah. And if you disagree with that, that's, that's okay. fine. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. Whatever. You're... I just had to let you know. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that, <laughs> that that's what I yeah. you know, I try but it's it is what it is. You know, people do what they do, and that's their free, God-given right, even if it's Absolutely. heading downhill towards bad life, towards bad decisions. And I told you, I tried to tell you, and that's all. That's on you, man. And that's what I've learned about my own choices, is people have tried to warn me, and I'm like, I'm going to do it. God did not make robots. <laughs> yeah. He gave us free will, and we have that chance, that opportunity to be saved and experience something. You think about it, even the angels don't get this. Mm. Angels, we get to experience something the angels don't. We have a choice mm. to follow God, mm. and we are given that choice. Mm. Um, you can get into, you know, elect theory of election, whatever. Um, <laughs> but um, there is there is a choice, and so we get to experience something that is just absolutely amazing. And if we didn't have that choice, that experience, that relationship between us and God would be meaningless. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's the thing about love is love. You can't control it. Mm -hmm. You know, all you can do is love people, even though they don't choose to do the right thing or believe in what you think or even like you. Mm -hmm. You just like, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion. You're entitled to your own being in your own way of living and that's that's up to you um so long as we can agree to disagree i guess right right kind of like mutually respect each other for our decisions even if they're bad or some or perceived as bad or perceived as different i could still see you as as god created being right a person Mm -hmm. but yeah and i think that's what it is i think that 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 not just this community, but anywhere, any person, whatever it, it you know, uh, why people don't want change is because they don't understand it and they're afraid of it. Mm-hmm. They're they're afraid. I think they're afraid to be wrong. That's what I think. You know, they're yeah. they're so stuck in their comfortability, which I call religion. Mm-hmm. They're so comfortable. Yeah. You know, I met this one person who said to me. They love to go to this other country. They love going and traveling there, right? And they were like, man, I love it. But the way the local people there look at me, because they're a different ethnic group, right. they look at me like I'm an outsider. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to fit in with them. And I love, I love, if I could live out there, I would. But then he goes back to his own hometown and he says, man, I wish that those, those some people in the from this state wouldn't stop coming to my state. And I think to myself, like, come on, man, like, you're saying the same thing that those other local people that the country that you love visiting are seeing about you. You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. Like, you get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's just, I think that's what it is. I think it's just, I think they're just, they want, they, it, it's hypocritical. They want, they want people to change, but they don't want to change. Exactly. You know, they want to influence everyone, but they don't want everyone to come and influence them. 
is that called? Uh, I don't want to colonialism, but when the United States, they were old, you know, they were, the British were doing it a lot. They were, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. They were going to different countries and saying, you guys are going to worship, uh, you guys are going to do what we command you to do because we set the yeah. rules. And then that could, and then they got big and then they started to go to, and do the same thing that, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, I think we end on there. I think, I think we need to, yeah, we can do a part two later. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, and it was mm -hmm. fun no and exciting to do this interview. Hopefully, I can salvage something from this. I'm sure I will <laughs> be able to. If not, I'll just – I will. I yeah. will make, I've posted a worse <laughs> as far as just quality and way, right, right, what right. I did and accidents and stuff. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll shoot again. Thank you guys okay. for tuning in, and thank you for listening, if that's still the plan. Absolutely. And thank you. Welcome. Will. <laughs> All right.